the Fish in Britain and what a fantastic programme we have for you this week. I'm going to be showing you exactly all the tackle I get ready prior to that major fly fishing competition. We've got the old favourites Hooked on YouTube and Fishing Britain News. But first, it's off to the River Avon for some predator dentistry. If you're an avid fishing YouTuber, you will have seen the clips of freshwater predators doing what comes naturally to them. Like this one, taking a defenceless baby duck right from under its mother's nose. Amazing, powerful, and a little hilarious. Don't often get to see that sort of stuff on Disney cartoons. You've got to love the internet. That was crazy. In the UK, pike, zander, and perch are at the top of the fishy food chain when it comes to our fresh waters, that is. And they have been both legendary monsters of the deep that can eat bull retrieving Jack Russells and even pull in small children by the ankles whilst they're paddling. That's just some of the tales I've heard. And they can also be admired prehistoric villains that some anglers just can't resist to tease, catch and then take pictures of. But there is no doubt that they are a great sport all throughout the year. Fishing for them with lures they love to chase, top swimming frogs that they love to smash, and smelly dead baits that are an inviting treat too good to pass up. What sets these apart from most of the cuter corn pellet and maggot munching freshwater fish is these pointy things in their huge gobs. To show you what I mean, we're back with predator expert Gary Palmer, and we're taking a trip up the River Avon on his boat Wet and Wild to hunt out the hunters to show you their hunting gear. No sooner than being guided out by the Breeden Marina pilot swan, Gary was just showing how one of his lures looks as it swims next to the boat, and boom, we have our first set of gnashers to show you. See if we can show you the dentistry on a little baby pike. If I just slide my fingers in there, it doesn't hurt him at all. You can see quite large teeth all the way along the outside edge. It's where they just literally just grab hold and that entire pad all the way through is just millions of little tiny teeth that just grab hold. Once you're in there, you're not coming out. As simple as that. Um, when you're actually holding them, I can slide my fingers inside there. I'm not near any teeth. So I'm not gonna get bitten holding him like that. And it's one of the safest ways to hold the fish. Can't jump away from you, you've got control of it. Um, one of the other things is just while we're looking at it in closer, just look at that pike side, how absolutely beautiful the colours are in it. They're just stunning. How people can hurt these fish is just beyond me. Beautiful. So that was the successful lure, which is just the Salmo Executor. 12 centimetre, lovely lure, just chuck it and troll. As you can see, the lure is covered in a combination of hook rash from the trolling, but mainly from teeth from pike, where it's just been smashed so many times over the months and you can just see you know you can imagine the dentistry on a pike to just be able to knock chips off it as it goes along speaking of going along we put the boat into gear and no sooner than getting up to the full trolling speed of around warp factor two miles an hour we get another tap on a different lure and the teeth are getting bigger to get all wrapped up inside the net. But if you look carefully, there are signs that Quick something release. with even bigger teeth are out there. Yeah, a of, uh, yeah something's had a... looks like it's almost taken a bite out of him. But uh, he's definitely been in the wars. But uh, we'll pop him back. And let him swim off. And away he goes, straight underneath the boat. And almost as if to prove a point, we spot something floating in the river. First we think it's a plastic bag, then a swan. 
but regretfully it turns out to be a very large Avon Pike. It looks and smells like it's been on its downstream journey for a while and it's such a shame to see but on a positive note it shows that they can grow to a good size in this healthy river. And it's amazing what else you find just floating down the waterways of the UK, isn't it? And when some of the top predator hunters bump into each other on the river, it can take hours to get them apart again. Swapping lures, ideas and gossip. Just the blades just fluttering on the surface. Water just erupted. 18 and a half pounder. It's the crenellated yeah. metal work. Straight away, as soon as I saw it, I was like, and say, oh, so you've tried it then since the article. I'm going to have to switch over just because there's no reels in the UK that I can get. That one's got an orange side tip and the other one's I don't orange tip. And it just, any flow or current will just make the end of the tail just gently and it's lethal for that method. But, it's like but eventually they are prized apart and we get fishing for any other sets of teeth we can inspect. But what are the main differences between the chompers of our predators? Massive difference. They're not like each other at all. Uh, the pike's got far more teeth. Tends to have lots more smaller ones. Um, the most, the, the thing that the zander's most famous for, or infamous for, are the dentistry, the two front teeth that look a bit like a vampire fish. That was just catching on the bottom. Just pull it off. Um, the Xander tend to have two right, quite prominent front teeth, top and bottom, which it almost uses to, to grab. You can quite often see where they've hit a fish and dropped it. They've got the little puncture marks on it. Um, when people first started fishing for them, they used to call them vampire fish and everything. For us to show you what these fangs look like, we have to catch one first. And Xanders are notorious for being down deep, so we swap our methods to jig heads to see if we can tempt one up. Dan and Yan seem to be working their magic and they pulled out another little pie crawl. It's like a pike, but very, very small. A perfect one in miniature. Now uh, we just need its great, 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 great ramp now. And while filming that, I think Gary pulled this little beauty out of his lunchbox. Lovely little Xander. Beautiful colour. They look stunning. All those little spots and flecks all over the rear fins. The spines are like needles. You've got to be so careful when you're handling them. Um, but let's have a look at the business end. Once they clamp them shut, they really don't want to open. Now, with a Xander, you can tell a different strat away. There's nowhere near as many visible teeth. You've got the two grabbing ones at the bottom, hence the vampire nickname, and you've got two grabbing ones at the top, there and there. And then all the way around, serrated lots of little teeth all the way around the edges, and then lines of teeth running back. But as you can see, there's far less armoury, there's far less teeth in there. Um, but the Xander really doesn't need it, because once it grabs hold with these front ones, it's not letting go. The other thing with the Xander is the amount of pressure they can exert with their jaws is massive. And you notice that the front teeth almost interlock as the mouth closes. They just miss each other. So when they grab hold, they really do just grab hold. They may be fierce looking and they may be killers, but they're also quite vulnerable in their own way. And it's our responsibility to make sure we handle them with care. Just like these beauties that Dan and Yan hooked just moments after we left. Always the way. But lucky for us, Yan was there with his camera. If you would like a guided fishing experience on a river, then contact Gary at river-guide.co.uk. From the Avon Tuffy Critters to another. Here's David with the news. This is Fishing Britain News. A Canadian fisherman has given a tired looking bald eagle a lift to shore. Don Dunbar found the exhausted bird floundering in the ocean off Vancouver Island. There's a happy ending. He passes it to an animal centre, they do a good job, it eats a whole quail and recovers. 
Have you ever witnessed bad behaviour whilst out fishing? Well, two Canadian anglers have found a useful way of reporting it. Mike Cowley and Dane Alexander of the Big Game Muskie Fishing Channel in Ontario saw another fisherman killing muskie, a local predator fish, and tossing them back because he says they kill the fish he likes to catch. Their outraged video sparked an investigation from local fishery officers and the angler concerned issued a full apology. Divers in South America have posted a video about a marine rescue. Thomas Montero of Ocean Video Serban, Flavia Pasagalia from Brazil were diving near Bat Islands in Costa Rica when they found a 20-foot manta ray caught in a mass of fishing line. They disentangled the fish and disposed of the line. One of the world's rare giant squid has been found and now dissected. The dissection took place at the Museum of New Zealand, Te Papa Tongawera. The live event on YouTube attracted 650,000 views. A pair of sport divers have released footage of a rare fish off the coast of Malta. The sunfish, or mola mola, is the heaviest known bony fish in the world. On a diet of jellyfish, it can grow up to a weight of 500 pounds. And finally, and continuing with a weird fish week on YouTube, we have this viral video. The video of the weird serpentine creature swimming in a lake has caused speculation that it's Iceland's version of the Loch Ness Monster. A Finnish scientist, Misa McCowan, has now poured cold water on the beast idea, pointing out that the object in the video is stationary and the flowing water is creating the illusion of movement. You are now up to date with Fishing Britain News. Fishing for facts, landing the stories. Now it's time for me to share a few secrets with you and show you all the kit I get ready before a major competition. Well, howdy folks. Yes, welcome to my back garden. Now, Aaron actually asked me, I know I'm going off to a competition, a big competition. It's the Anglian International Final on Rutland at the end of this week. Last week in Fishing Britain, we saw Charlie with really minimal tackle trying to catch salmon. And I emphasise the trying. So Aaron asked me, well, what kit am I going to take? Well, I've set it all out in the garden. Now, here it is. So, folks, here it is, the whole kit I'm taking. Let me talk you through it. Well, obviously to start with, we've got a rod too. That's to protect our rods. What rods am I gonna be using? Well, I've got the 10 foot seven weight, near we are. That's gonna be able, enable me to fish dries, nymphs, and mid water. If it turns out to be a pulling match where we're pulling blobs and pulling lures and all that, then I bring out the big guns, 10 foot eight weight. Then, the most important thing, a boat seat, right? There's nothing worse than fishing in a competition and your knees are starting to hurt. You want to be as comfortable as possible. But I'm going to be spending five days sat on this. So your bum becomes rectangle. Get an added seat, pad on there, and it just gives your bum a little bit more comfort. Great set of waterproofs. These are all the way from Japan. Really, really lightweight, but 100% waterproof. And that's really, really important. Boat net with an extra, extra long handle. Now the best rogue on the market, I've got to tell you, is the Witchwood Paradrogue. It is absolutely superb. However, get yourself a decent pair of G-clamps. They will never, ever let you down. The other thing, it's a competition. So I need a bass bag to get my fish. And lastly, the box of tricks. Oh my God. Have a look in here. Top tray, kindly built for me by Hugh Waters. It's got a couple of boxes in the top. I've got doubles, I've got singles, lures. I've got the boobies. Inside then, I've got more boobies. I've got blobs, I've got dries, I've got nymphs. And then inside here, I've got every fly line under the sun. I counted it the other day, 48 lines. Now why the heck do I need that many? Well, let's start from the top. Obviously you need a floater. I like to use one floater for dries. I like to use a different floater for nymphs. 
Then midge tips. Oh, right, we've got so many different midge tips on the market now, it's unbelievable. The standard Rio midge tip, which was the original one, fantastic. Then we've got non-stretch midge tips. We've got a three foot fast sinking tip. We've got a six foot slow. We've got a six foot fast. We've got an eight foot, a 10 foot, a 15 foot, which is the Cortland Ghost tip. So as you can see, you're starting to build up. You've got intermediates now. Oh, intermediates just go from five, um, half an inch per second to two inches per second. So again, you could have three, four different types. You need stretch, you need non-stretch. Then you've got down to the sinkers, the die threes. You need stretch, you need non-stretch. You need the sweep lines, which actually go down belly first. You need the straight line sink ones. Then you've got the die five. Then you've got the die seven. Then you've got the die eight. You've got the comp specials in the die seven, die five, and die three. You've got the 40 plus ones. So soon you can see with all those different lines and they all fish slightly different and the thing with the competition if you're a pleasure angler it doesn't matter if you wait 5 10 15 20 30 seconds for your flies to get down to a level but just imagine if you're in the competition and you've got you know every time you cast you've got to wait 30 seconds well that's every time you cast in a day add 30 seconds to it that you're basically non-fishing time it builds up throughout the day and you're wasting a lot of your time. I'm different to a lot of anglers. I don't wear a wet fishing waistcoat when I go out in a boat. The reason is that all angling waters, you have to wear a life preserver, which is right to protect your life. But then with a life preserver going over here, it masks all your pockets and your waistcoat. So you're trying to go behind that. With this, you've got the life preserver on and then you can put this over the top and you've got all your tools there ready to hand. So it's far, far easier couple of other things that I always carry. We've got density mud, we've got floatant, and then we've got the fluorocarbon. Never ever use anything else. Even on my dries, I use fluorocarbon. This is where a lot of people say, oh no, 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 no. Never use fluorocarbon on dries. Trust me, if you never have, try it. The other thing is polarized sunglasses, three. Why? Well, I will highlight. If it's really, really sunny, that sun's bounce, bouncing off the water, it's hitting your face, it's glaring in your eyes, you need a really, really dark pair. 90% of the time in the UK, we can get away with amber, but then if you're out early morning or later in the evening, the light's gone, amber, you're straining your eyes to see your flies, then a low light pair. So it's a low light, amber, and a high light pair, always. So there you go, that's all my kit. I've got to pack all this away, try and get it in the boot of the car, and then it's off to sunny Rutland. Now it's time to go over to Charlie. We're hooked on YouTube. Charlie Jacoby here. This is my weekly roundup of the best fishing on YouTube. We all want that big fish, says Norwegian Tackle Company guidelines guy Mikhail. So here's how. He shows off salmon catching tips. Back in the UK, Simon Kidd from Snowby is living the dream, fishing one of the finest chalk streams, the River Avon, for trout. On the other side of the Atlantic, Adam Howell is fishing for salmon in the rich, rich rivers of Newfoundland. It's a bit of a road trip too, set to music. Out to sea in the USA after bluefish in this film, the Kayak Blues Big Bluefish Buck tailing is by John Skinner and supports his book on the subject Fishing the Bucktail. Book plus YouTube, nice idea. Under the Water and Blue Water Madness is a spearfishing edit by Dion Donowski set to music. Carp films are a bit like carp, large and purposeful with long periods of hanging around. What lures you to this one is that Valley Pool in Cambridgeshire is a private syndicate with strictly no public access. Further south, Sussex Carpers are back with episode 29, a windy afternoon at Barrett's Park. They are out to get one each. And finally, Addictive Fishing is closing down for the off-season. Their last film of the year is the finale chat with Captain Blair Wiggins plus bloopers and outtakes. Click on the links to watch the videos or you will find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for Hooked on YouTube, ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well folks, that's it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed the programme. If you have, hit the subscribe button and share it with all your friends. And if you want to keep up to date with all the other programmes on the channel, well, by now you know what to do. Visit our website, fieldsportchannel.tv and fill out the constant contact form. Don't forget, you can get involved with our Facebook page and also follow us on Twitter.